Worry is a lot like sitting in a rocking chair. You're going back and forth, you're moving, there's motion, but it's getting you nowhere. I worked with a man several years ago, and he had a daughter. Now, unfortunately, his little girl became very unwell. Now, in the beginning, he had every right to be concerned as a parent especially because the doctors had no idea what the cause was. She was in and out of the hospital. Doctors were doing all kinds of tests for months, but nothing conclusive ever came of it. Now, while all of this was going on, this man was so worried. He was extremely stressed. He would worry thinking. What if it was this disease? What if something was wrong internally? What if he loses his little girl? The worry consumed him every single moment of the day. His every other thought was worry. After I saw that it was taking its toll on him and affecting his health, we sat down and I said to him, why don't you stop worrying so much? When you have so much to thank God for, he looked at me sideways. And I told him, other than the appearance of your daughter in feeling unwell, she's at school and doing well, right? At home, she's doing what little girls do and playing with their friends. The doctors have performed so many tests on her, but found absolutely nothing yet. Nothing for months. Why are you worrying so much instead of thanking God that she's not being diagnosed with something serious? Instead of seeing God strengthening her, all you can see is what might happen to her. Now it turns out all it was was an allergy. And once they addressed that, she was absolutely fine. You see, worry is all about perspective. An optimistic man will look at an ambulance and say, great, help is on the way. A worrisome man will look at an ambulance and say, oh no, someone is dying. Perspective. A believer in faith will pray and say, God, stand with me in this storm I'm facing. A believer with worry will pray and say, God, what if this storm destroys me? What if it never ends? How come you're not stopping this? How many times have we heard the words, don't worry? Fathers say those two words to sons. Wives say those two words to husbands. Pastors say those two words to their church congregations. And the word of God even says those same two words to us, the children of God. But no matter how many times we hear those words, Regardless of how many times we read those words in the Bible, somehow, some way, there just always seems to be something that makes us worry. Sadly, it's an inescapable truth for many people. But for the person who wants to live their life in the way God intended, you have to decide. You have to make a choice. How will you handle worry? At one point or another, you will face something that will make you worry. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You will face some hardship. Not everything will go your way. You might have to deal with the trials of sickness, tragedy, natural or economic disasters. And oh yes, The devil. Being told something like that would certainly make you worry. But if you're patient enough to read the second part of that verse in John 16, 33, Jesus said, yes, you will face troubles in this world. But take heart, be courageous, be of good cheer. I, I have overcome the world. So take heart. It means to grind up your courage or to be encouraged.
encouraged. Those words are meant to lift us, to strengthen our spirit, and to give us hope and peace. We all allow worry to creep into our lives knowingly and unknowingly at times. Of course, it's natural to be anxious at times. There's some harsh realities in this world that we should all be prepared for. We should know how to recognize danger and how to deal with it appropriately. But when we let worry and anxiety consume us, it stops being adaptive. It becomes destructive. It becomes enslaving. Instead of focusing on God, we focus on all the things that could possibly go wrong, things that we usually have no control over. But there's someone who is in control, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Understand that the God who made the heavens and the earth is the same God who is watching over us right now. He is intimately involved in every situation. He is infinitely good and infinitely wise. He sees everything that could possibly happen. He sees our worries, and yet he commands us not to fear. He commands us instead to trust him. He knows what's best for us, even more than we do. And he knows that in the end, Satan will be defeated. Love will conquer all, and the forces of darkness will be no more. See, no matter what's going on in our lives, God is in control. No matter what's going on in the world, God is in control. And whether you understand it or not, God is in control. Nothing is a surprise to him. Nothing catches him off guard. God sees the entire timeline of the earth from beginning to the end. He was there at creation and he will be there when the earth as we know it is no more. We, on the other hand, are only human. We can only see a tiny fraction of what God has planned for the people he loves. When Jesus died on that cross and when he rose from that grave, he proved that nothing and no one could stop him from getting to us. And if we are followers of Christ, we don't have to be bound by fear. Because of his amazing love, we are victorious. We are more than conquerors. We are children of God. So what do we do with all this anxiety? How do we deal with all this worry we've been carrying around? The Bible gives us a simple answer. Pray about it. The Bible says to make our requests known to God because he cares for us. He wants us to know that everything will be all right. Even if things don't turn out the way we'd hoped, instead of disparaging every moment of every day, let's be people of prayer. Let's be people of faith. Let's be known as people who rise above anxiety and trust that no matter what, God is in control.